when it comes to calling, back in those days, there's a couple outfitters that uh, my dad knew real well, and one of them was named Keith Stilson. And back then, those guys, they made what commonly would call a, a flute. And what they did was they took like a water pipe, like an inch copper tubing, and they cut a piece about this big and another piece about this big where they could put them together. And what they did is on one end, they took and, and cut a piece of, of wood and stuck it in there and then they notched, they notched out that metal where that copper is to make, you know, like, like a little flute. And uh, Keith, he'd, he'd put that together and then he'd hold one in and it, it, it was really tinny sounding. But, you know, you gotta realize back then those elf weren't bugle shy. There was nobody doing that. This is, you know, 1960, 62, 63. So I was about 16. I went in the sporting goods store and some some guy out of uh, Potlash, Idaho was making these calls and instead of using that tinny, you know, water pipe, he he had a piece of like uh, black hose, stiff hose that and then on the end of that he put another piece and he made the same kind of flute. And you hold at the end and you could get maybe two notes out of it. But it wasn't a tinny sound, it was a little better. And I turned that bugle, I used the same part, but I went across the street where I lived to the plumber's house. I got a great big piece, it was like this big around, it was black hose about this long. And I stuck it on the end of that, but I couldn't reach it. <laughs> I was way out. So I went down to the hardware store, Benson's, and got one of those corks, like you'd put a cork in your bottle or something, and I rammed it in the, into it. And I used it, and oh man, it had a real hollow sound. And Hey, this sounds pretty good, but the trouble is the thing is like this long. So I made a little thing for it to hang on, but when I, on horseback, I, I put it in my gun scabbard, you know, I just put it in as guiding. And it really did a good job. In fact, it did so good that one day I was in Louis Meadows and I was tooting away and I had a hunter. And I looked down below me down, the Louis Meadows went clear down like this, almost to, to the Crystal Creek. And, and I look down there and I see these two hats come along like this, coming up like this. <laughs> and I stopped bugling and they, and they come up and they looked at me and turned around and walked off. And so I get back to camp after dark and, and there's Keith in there and he takes me aside and he says, don't you ever tell anybody that you called me in. I go, okay, okay Keith, I'll never tell anybody that I called you in. <laughs> But it worked pretty good, you know. So back in those days, outfitters, they never bugled. They never, that was kind of the first flute or bugle used. But yeah, back then, it was very few guys had them. Most of the guys, and I knew a few of the guides, you know, when I was in high school, and they just did what Dad did, take out a spent cartridge and blow on it and hope to hear something. It's not like now where, you know, my dad, and he, he helped invent the cow call and stuff. All that stuff was never around at that time, of course. And diaphragms didn't come until early 70s. So that was, that was just about, about it. You know, we're like you. We have a history of hunting over generations, and I hope you really enjoyed this. And you might want to consider subscribing to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of this stuff.